Little walk in a Coleman. We'll start in the back. These bumper caps come off. That's going to be the perfect spot to store your sewer hose. Side seals. Every once in a while, you know, I want to inspect them. Make sure they're not dry, cracked or rotted or whatnot. Um, if you do start noticing that, um, you can take it in and we can either do the side out maintenance, which is uh, a conditioner for these seals to help prevent them from cracking and, cracking and drying out. And then we do a special uh, dry lubricant on the side out rails. Or you could buy the necessary materials to do that yourself. Back here, your dump area. I always make sure the valves are closed before I take that cap off. And then when I hook my hose up, I do my black tank first. As I get all the way empty, then I do my gray tank. That way, when I pick up my hose to move it, to put it in my bumper, I, I don't have a hose dripping with black tank water because you flushed it out with your gray tank water. Shore cord. So your shore cord is built into the unit, so you can't lose it. Just make sure that when you leave, uh, you unplug it and just shove it back in here. Fresh water, this is where you're going to set your hose to fill your onboard fresh tank. You need to run your pump to pull off from your fresh tank. I definitely recommend draining your uh, fresh tank after every trip. So if you had it out using it for a week and then you're going to store it for like a month, I'll drain the water out of it so it's not sitting with water in it. It starts to become stagnant and be a pain in the butt to flush out. So to drain your uh, fresh water tank, there's a drain right there. And right here is the city water. This is where you're going to hook your hose up to to run off of city water pressure. Um, you won't need to run your pump or anything like that doing that. Here, lots of good information. It has your unloaded vehicle weight, your VIN, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire pressure, 65 PSI. Go off of that. Not what's printed on your tires. And then tire sizes and cargo carrying capacity and calculate it. All lots of good information here. You do want to keep it. Keep, keep in mind your cargo carrying capacity, so you have 539 pounds of cargo carrying capacity. Up here, single, 20 pound cylinder. All you gotta do is turn it all the way to the left for on, all the way to the right for off. Group 24 RV marine grade battery, it's a brand new battery, so you don't have to worry about getting one installed. Um, winter, I recommend taking the battery completely out, storing it somewhere um, warmer than just sitting outside in the cold basement garage or whatnot. And then in the summer, um, not in the summer, but when you're using it, I re between trips I recommend disconnecting the negative lead off your battery. That's going to keep anything from using your battery while you're not at the camper. Tongue jack, this is what you're going to use to get it on off your truck as well as level your unit. We'll explain a little bit more of that as we go along. Seven way, that gets hooked to the back of your truck. That's what's going to allow the marker lights and the turn signals and the trailer brakes to work. Trailer brakes only work if your tow vehicle has a brake controller. It's pretty much it for up here. Chains, cross them. You got your breakaway here. This goes hook to that box right here. If any, um, uh, if any of this would have come undone from your truck, it's going to pull that pin because your hook, this, this is hooked to your truck. It'll activate the brakes on the trailer. There, plenty of storage here. But here you are pre-wired for solar. Now it, it doesn't have the panels or the cables you need for it, but you need the Furion solar charge kit. Then you just plug that into here. Put, got, you have the panels and then that just trickle charges your battery. So you could go primitive camping somewhere without not having to worry about uh, your battery dying. Your battery only runs your 12 volt appliances like your lights and your uh, anything that's 12 volt you can run off your battery. Stabilizer jacks, you gotta send them. Okay. These are stabilizing jacks, they're not leveling jacks, they're not meant to pick up the weight of the trailer. Like, and that is why we I say use a tongue jack for leveling. What you do is you use your tongue jack to level it front to back. So raise and lower the front with your tongue jack to get it level front to back. Um, if you want it side to side as you're backing and then to the campsite, uh, blocks under your tires to kind of raise and lower one side to get it level side to side. Once it's all level, then you can snug these jacks to the ground and then you're good. Um, you don't want to, like I said, it's not meant to pick up the weight of the trailer. Um, you will trip the uh, self-resetting breaker that's in there. You have to wait for it to reset. If that breaker were to fail, you could amp out the motor and ruin the motor. Or you could bend the, the actual legs of the jack. And that's just, that's no good. Um, these 
legs don't bend by themselves. So if you see that happen, then that's non-warrantable. That's why I say I don't pick up the weight of the trailer, and that's easily avoidable. Auto power, it's GFCI protected. All your GFCIs are on the same circuit. So if one GFCI would trip, all the connected ones will too as well. We'll show you inside how to reset that. Water heater is super simple. So it's all set up to be used right now. You got the plug in there. All you got to do is hook up water to it. It'll start filling automatically. Once it's full, you'll be able to go to light it. All you got to do to light it is, see this? Put that to pilot. Line the pilot up right here until you can push this button. You might have to kind of move it. Now you can push this button. So push and hold this button. As you're pushing and holding this button, you use a barbecue lighter to light that pilot down in there. Once that pilot is lit, you can then turn it to on and it'll light the burner. Simple as that. And then while it's on, it'll cycle on and off to help regulate. The, the burner will shut on and off, leaving the pilot on to help regulate its predetermined preset temperature of the water. Um, if you don't want your water heater on, you turn it off. If you turn it off, it leaves the pilot off. It turns the pilot and the burner off, but if you turn it off from on to pilot, it shuts the burner off, but leaves the pilot on. And then this is how you would change the temperature of your water by rotating this. Definitely recommend making sure it's clean back here quite often, clean in here, clean in here. I'll make sure it's clean. And then I definitely recommend uh, draining it after every trip because you don't want water to sit in there just like your fresh tank, it'll get stagnant. So before you pull this plug out, Open up your pressure relief. Water will squirt out. That's fine. Once it stops squirting out, snap that closed. Then you can pull that plug out. Um, if you neglect to do this first, all that pressure that you relieved here is not going to come out here, and you're going to get a bath. And um, if you've been running, it's going to be a hot bath, and that's going to be no fun at all. Furnace. Just make sure this is clean in here. They don't make screens for it. Um, I've been told they don't recommend you uh, running them with the screens on, um, but people do it anyways. You just didn't hear it from me. And then I definitely, um, like I said, recommend cleaning it every once in a while. Keep any debris out of there. Similar deal with your fridge. Clean up in these little vents here. They do make screens for these. Um, and then every once in a while, I do recommend taking this panel completely off and cleaning back there. All right, we'll come on into the inside. We have the air on now, just because it's a little hot out here. We'll turn it off so we can hear. Put awning controls here, extend and retract. Make sure your door is out of the way when you do it. So you might have to hold on to the door. Awning does not automatically stop when it goes out. That's something you have to see. That's why you want the door to be out of the way. That's something you have to visually look and see. Um, when you see that bare metal tube and the flat thing down, the awnings all the way out. It's been rolled up for a while, the flap will. Come on, there you go. It'll look like that, you'll see that white tag, that means you're all the way open. It is adjustable for pitch so you can grab here pitch down the corner like that so if it's raining you can have water run off to the corner rather than all the way along the edge or you can adjust both arms to lower it to keep the sun out of your eyes if you do have it open when it's raining as soon as it gets sunny out sunny and dry out oh if it, sorry if you have it open when it's raining that's fine but if you start storming real bad um, as soon as you get the uh um, the ability to close the dang awning up. Um, oh, hard, heavy gust of wind, heavy rain could tear the fabric or bend one of these arms. If you roll it in wet, as soon as you get the chance to, as soon as it starts getting sunny out, whether it's when you get home or whether it's in a few hours, roll your awning back out um, because you don't want it holding moisture. Just let that go all the way in and then. Then you can read how full your battery, how charged your battery is, your fresh, your black, your gray. You don't have a second gray tank, ignore that. 
And then you have your water pump. So if you're gonna pull from your fresh tank, you turn your water pump on. Then you have lights exterior. You do have awning lights. And then interior lights will just turn on these on and off these main row of lights. And then side out controls right here. Of USB outlets and uh, an outlet over there for the, by the bed. You should have, yep, you do have some storage under the bed as well. This, this, this couch right here turns into a bed. All you do is lift up underneath, store it underneath, pull out, lays flat like a bed. Lift back up. Oh, boy. Close it just like that. And you do, do have this fold down with cup holders in it. Smoke alarm. Use your standard 9 volt batteries. So when they start giving those low voltage chirps, I'll throw a new battery in it. AC, super simple. The blue is your AC, the, the, the black is just the fan. Then you have temperature right here. That's the coldest, that's the warmest. This is optional heat, this does not have the heat in it. This doesn't mean it's gonna be uh, heat, it just means it's the, the warmest the AC will be. Then you can open all these up, have them diverge out evenly across the ceiling or you can close them all and just have it all come out underneath. Microwave works like your standard household microwave. It's only going to work when their camper's plugged in. Cooktop, super simple. Turn the knob to light. Light it with a barbecue lighter, match, whatever you have to light. Fridge, just as simple. Tap that to turn it on. Its only mode is auto. It's going to default to 110. If someone were to accidentally unplug plug you or if the camper were to lose power, it's going to automatically switch to running off of propane. Um, if your gas were on, if the gas wasn't on, this light would be red. Um, so, yep. That's good. It's going to keep your food from getting spoiled in case of a loss of power. Or if you are primitive camping somewhere, um, you don't have the ability to plug your camper in, you can run in this off of propane, um, and you'll be able to keep your food cool, cool. It doesn't use that much propane, but it still does need 12 volts to run off of propane. So push and hold, turns it off. There you go. Light below that, breaker box. All your breakers for your 120 volt appliances, all your fuses for your 12 volt appliances. Definitely recommend carrying some spares just in case. Over here, spot to mount a TV. Watch how long the screws you use for your mounts. You have a outlet here, and then right over here, you can see one of these is labeled antenna power, one of these is labeled Wi Fi. You have to actually buy the Wi Fi thing for the roof for that to work. Um, antenna power, you have your hook through here. Um, if this green light is on, you'll be using your antenna. If it's off, cable. So don't forget that. Then over here, turns into a bed, super simple. Lift up the table, pop them legs up, set them aside. Table rests on these black bumpers. And you just lay these cushions to create a platform to sleep on. All right, down here, that's the outlet you hit reset on if any of the GFCI is going to trip. Left of that is a carbon monoxide and propane gas alarm that is hardwired to the 12 volt system, so there's no batteries you have to worry about changing. Um, however, if that battery up front, the one I was showing you by the hitch, or the tongue rather, um, if that were to start to die, that, that alarm will start giving you low voltage chirps too as well. Then your furnace is super simple. Put that over, kicks it on, slide the bar over, that's your changing your temperature. Very simple. And then clip it over, turn it off. And this will kind of tell you the temperature it is inside. And then your bathroom, last but not least, the bathroom. Super simple. Toilet, as long as you're pushing this, the toilet's gonna keep flushing. Shower, hot and cold, they do give you complimentary black tank, like cleaner. You need to have a, a vent here. Definitely recommend having that open when you're taking the shower to kind of keep the moisture off these walls. Alrighty then. That concludes your uh, your virtual tour of your uh, Coleman. Hope you guys enjoy using this camper. I hope you guys get lots of good use out of it. I hope you found this video informative. Oh, see? One more thing before we go off. Your radio. Walk right past it. Tap that to turn the radio on. You have auxiliary in, so you can plug your phone in through there. Tap it again. Tap it again. You get Bluetooth, tap it again, you get radio. So tapping power changes your uh, 
what source you're on, and then cycle through your bands, AM, FM here, um, scroll through your channels, mute, volume, and then these are presets. And then you have USB, that's just for charging your phone, rather than uh, interfacing with the radio itself. And then there should be, hidden in here, your, yes, this big blue book is going to have all your manuals in it. Now, now, I was a little premature with the ending here, so now we're going to end it here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, hope you guys found the video informative, and goodbye.